Hello, this is a quick video about our A-level policy for maths at Oxford. Everything I'm going to say in this video applies to maths, maths and statistics, maths and computer science and maths and philosophy at the University of Oxford. If you're interested in a different course, then please check out their website for their policy. And if you're applying to other universities, then please check their policy on their websites, which might be different from the Oxford policy. OK, let's start by looking at some standard conditional offers for courses at Oxford. So here they are in terms of A-levels for maths, maths and statistics, maths and philosophy. We're looking for A-star, A-star, A with A-star in maths and A-star in further maths. For maths and computer science, it's slightly different. We're looking for A-star, A, A with that A-star in maths or further maths and at least A in the other. Uh, these are standard across all of the colleges at the University of Oxford. We've all signed up to use the same sort of conditional offers um, and they're conditional because usually people haven't finished their A-levels at the time we, we make them offers so they finish off their study in school or college aiming to get these grades. Now for the majority of offers we make on A-levels this is exactly how it works. Um, if you're doing maths, further maths and any third subject then you can pretty much stop watching the video now because almost certainly your offer will be A star, A star, A with A star in maths, A star in further maths, A in any third subject for maths, maths and stats, maths and philosophy. Um, but there's some subtlety around that and I'd like to spend the rest of this video addressing some special cases and some policy on things that have come up a few times. Okay, let's start by talking about further mathematics uh, because if you're not doing further mathematics, then there might be uh, several reasons why that is. We really highly recommend further mathematics. We think it's a really great course that helps prepare you for university mathematics. For example, it includes complex numbers um, and you can learn about complex numbers at university. We can teach complex numbers at university, but having seen them before helps with the transition to university. We also really like the style of the content in further mathematics. So we're big fans. But we know that not every school or college can teach further mathematics and that if you happen to be at a school or college where further maths isn't taught then you might still be a great mathematician who would do really well on our course. We don't want you to be disadvantaged. Um, so if your school or college can't teach further maths um, you can still make a competitive application. The maths admissions test doesn't use any further maths. At interview we won't ask you questions assuming you have further maths because you don't. Um, and any offer we make you would be conditional on the maths that you're doing. Um, so if there's no further maths at all then based on uh, the other courses that you're doing and if you've got AS level further maths because that's offered then based on that. Um, on the other, other hand, if you decided not to take further mathematics in year 12, then that's different. Of course, we know that people might discover a love of mathematics during year 12. A-level maths is fantastic, um, so you might discover that you want to do maths at university. If that's the case, then I would really strongly encourage you to pick up AS further maths in year 13, if you can, if your school or college will let you, just so that you've seen an extra bit of mathematics, you've seen a little bit more um, of the maths that's out there. Uh, and prepared for university like that. Um, we're really big fans of further mathematics. Um, now it might be the case that there's another reason why you weren't able to do further maths. There might be some mitigating circumstances or extenuating uh, circumstances that we should know about because um, we want to take that into consideration and treat you fairly in your application. So it's important to let us know if you're not doing further maths, um, let us know why so we can take it into consideration. And then just like everyone else, you'll take the maths emissions test, which doesn't involve any further maths anyway. Okay, um, that's I think the most common question I get asked about our standard conditional offers. Let's look at some, some other things that I get asked as well. Um, people ask me about four A-levels quite a bit. Um, Doing four A-levels is fine with us if you've got the opportunity to do four A-levels. Not everybody gets that opportunity. It's not an admissions advantage or a disadvantage. Um, so it's not an advantage in the sense that we're not more likely to select you based on the fact that you're doing a fourth A-level and something unrelated. Um, it's not a disadvantage. We're not going to ask you to get a grade in that fourth A-level. Um, the usual way we'd phrase the offer is A star in maths, A star in further maths, A in either subject three or subject four. Uh, you'll notice that I'm not referring to further maths as your fourth subject um, because that's not how I feel about further maths. I feel like further maths is a core, important, brilliant subject. Um, I know that your school or college might refer to it as your fourth subject, um, but for me, one of the top two. Right, okay, um, so if you're doing four or more A-levels, um, then that's, that's fine with us, uh, but not a, an advantage or disadvantage. And you get basically the same offer phrased in terms of the subjects that you're doing. Okay. Um, 
So something else that I've seen a few times is maths in year 12, further maths in year 13. Um, so we know that some people learn maths and further maths in series and some people learn maths and further maths in parallel. That's fine with us. Um, we think it's the uh, equal amounts of workloads, whichever way you're doing it. And if you get the grades, you've got the grades. I um, mean, if you get A star in maths in year 12, that counts towards the offer. So then we'd still be looking for A star in further maths and A in a third subject in year 13. Uh, our age and stage policy here is that if you take A levels earlier, including if you do A levels earlier than year 12, I suppose, um, then you should still get the grades. We don't count a B when you're 13 as equivalent to, anyway, we don't do any calculations like that. Um, Okay, uh, we think maybe about 25% of people out there are doing maths in year 12, further maths in year 13. If you're doing that, absolutely fine. Um, it doesn't matter to us whether you certify the um, A-level maths in year 12 or if you save it and get the grade at the end of year 13. Um, which brings me on to something about retakes and cancelled exams. Um, we'd prefer not to see retakes, of course, um, but we know that people can have a bad day. Um, obviously, we'd prefer it if you didn't always have a bad day, uh, but we know that uh, it might be the case that you, you're retaking a grade. Maybe you got A in year 12 and you'll try to retake maths to get up to A star in year 13. Um, if that's the case, then we'd sort of like to know why that happened, uh, if, especially, especially if there's some sort of mitigating circumstance or extenuating condition again um, around, around your application so that we can take that into consideration and identify that you maybe have the potential to do really well on our course. Um, we're not treating grades from years with no actual exams differently. Uh, this is something I have to say now that in 2020 and 2021 we're aware that there are no actual maths exams taking place, but you're still getting grades. Um, we're going to treat those grades just as normal. Um, we know that you might have missed out on the chance to do a maths exam and show us what you can do in a maths exam through that. And we hope that doing the maths admissions test gives you a chance to do a maths exam and show us what you can do in a maths exam to make up for that. Um, but we're going to treat grades that have been certified in 2020 and 2021 just as normal. Okay, um, I've got some subject specific advice next um, because you'll notice I've been saying any subject for the third A level in our standard conditional offer. I'm going to go through a few uh, A levels in particular just to make that point about it being any subject. Um, so you, people ask about A level physics quite a bit. Um, that's not required for maths at Oxford. Um, you don't need to have done A level physics. Um, maths and computer science, I suppose, recommend that you have experience with a science subject, which could be physics if you if you like. Um, but that's a recommendation, not a requirement. Anyway, it's a science subject at university, so having some experience like that can be helpful. Um, let's address the applied mathematics. Um, our maths degree does involve some applied mathematics, um, which deals with the real world, um, but we teach it from first principles without assuming any previous experience or any ex previous enjoyment of mechanics units uh, or uh, dynamics before or physics from beforehand. Um, this sort of material is I'm going to say much more fun at university where we can assume calculus and teach you things in a very mathematical way. Um, we don't assume that our math students have any previous experience with the real world. Um, we'll teach it from first principles. Okay, um, uh, next up, maths and statistics. Um, A-level statistics is not required for maths and statistics. You don't need to do A-level statistics. That third subject could be anything you like, so maths, further maths, anything else doesn't have to be statistics. Um, I've got a few of these. Maths and computer science, uh, the third A-level doesn't need to be computing or computer science. Um, they're not required and they're slightly different from the way that the university course works. And maths and philosophy, A-level philosophy is not required. Um, an essay-based subject might be helpful for the philosophy half of the course, uh, but it's not a requirement. So just in conclusion then, our standard conditional offers for A-levels are A star, A star, A, with A star in maths and further maths, A in any third subject for maths, maths and statistics, and maths and philosophy. And our standard conditional offer for maths and computer science is A star A A, with A star and A in maths and further maths. And for the vast majority of our A-level offers, that's the text we use because that's what people are doing. But there's some subtlety, uh, which I've outlined in the previous slides. Okay.